So a little bit of backstory on this is this is a secondary home for this customer. So unfortunately, the pump has been running the entire time that they've been out of town. It's always a good idea to turn your well breaker off and turn your water heater off if you're not at home. Because if, say, a pipe were to actually bust inside the home, the entire home would be flooded right now. Luckily, it was just a pipe down in the well. So today I'm here on a no water call and I've already diagnosed the tank. The tank's a little old, it has some age on it, but it seems to be okay. And the, uh, the pump was running. So I came out here and I wanted to make this video because this is a pitless adapter. You can tell by the way that the cap is and this pipe here is not your water pipe that is strictly an electrical conduit. Uh, a pitless adapter is a below grade connection that allows all of your pipe to stay underground. Um, it's how this one was installed and I wanted to give you kind of an idea of what to expect and what you're going to need if you're going to pull your pump out and you have a pitless adapter that looks like this. In order to remove your well pump on a pitless adapter successfully and safely is the key here we need a pitless bar and this is basically just a five foot one inch steel bar because these uh, steel threads down here, I use this as a thread protector. These threads are what you're going to need, one inch threads. And then we come down here and we have this T here. Now what this is going to prevent, it prevents the bar itself from falling down in the well as you go down to try to pull it. If it were to be too heavy or slip out of your hands, it will fall and then catch itself on the casing. So let's go ahead and open the well up and see what we find. On the top of your pitless cap, you're going to have six 7 16 bolts. There will be a, a, a nut on the bottom, and you'll have to remove them as I've done. So we're going to tap it, get it loose, and then this should pop up. There it goes. Now, as soon as I lifted that, you can hear it running. Now, what's happened here is... The fitting has broken because they chose to use plastic. So if I can get it zoomed in, you can see it's broken right there at the bottom of the pitless. You can see the water moving around. It's not that great of lighting, but you can see it. So what's happened is the fitting is broke. And what's holding the pump right now is that blue rope and the wire. So you can tell the wire's kind of pulled down a little bit. So right now the wire and the rope are the safety factor and the only thing that's keeping the rest of it from falling because the fitting is broken. So let's go ahead, we're gonna go turn the breaker off now and then we're gonna pull this thing out. Unfortunately, what I've seen is they left this PVC pipe here basically as the same thing as my pitless bar. Now, I do not like it when they do this because PVC, at the age, it gets old and it gets brittle and then it'll break. If it breaks, where's it gonna go? It's all gonna go down the hole. So on this house, the breaker was actually on the exterior of the home on the power supply pole. So if you have a double wide or a single wide, typically that's where you're going to find your well pump breaker. So I have my flashlight and we're going to take a peek down the well and see if you can see. All right, so you can see the pipe and the clamp that's on the pipe. It's kind of uh, not in focus there. But um, let's see if we can get it to focus. There we go. So the, the clamps have failed and it blew the fitting off. Maybe the fitting broke, who knows. But you can see there's water down in the well. But right now all that weight is hanging on that, uh, on that rope. So in order to successfully and safely pull this out, we're going to have to do a few things first. So this device here is what I call a pump dog. I'm basically going to set it on top of the well we're going to pull it up and lock the pipe in this that way I can safely work on it without it falling back down the well ideally I would like to take this pipe out so I could go ahead and put my metal pipe in to where there is no issue now there's no way of getting a wrench on this to take it out but what you can do you can go ahead and clean it up we can put a bell on it we can slip another piece of pipe over it extend it up that way I can grab onto it and try to untwist it we're going to clean around Clean inside of here. 
We're going to glue our extension piece on. <clears throat> Give it a turn. Now that should help me. We're going to allow this to uh, the glue to set up. It'll take about two minutes. And then I'll be able to pull this out. And hopefully I can either wiggle it out and change it over to the metal or I'll just be able to use this. But now I can grip it. When it's down in the well, it's just doesn't make sense. Now when you're dealing with a pitless, sometimes it's really hard to actually get it to break loose that seal. So sometimes you gotta wiggle it back and forth. Try to get that slip joint connection to bust loose just a little bit. That's why it's always easier to use metal because then you can really force the, the issue. About all I could lift so I can't lift it a couple of things I could do is try to unspin it but I don't want to break it off because then it's ruined and luckily I was able to unspin it that is just pure luck and see this right here is all that was in there just these little bit of threads were the only thing that I was going to be pulling the entire system out on not good now we're gonna go ahead and use our true bar our metal bar and pull it out See now, the way this is designed, it's so wide, if something were to be too heavy and fall, it's just gonna catch and stop right here. See now I can really wiggle it. Ugh. Just like that, it came up. Now, on yours, when you pull it up, your pipe is gonna be connected to the bottom of this. And let's go ahead try to get this thing out of the ground and hopefully nothing bad happens now we're gonna use the wire and grab it and we're gonna pull oh yeah and now we have a hold to the pipe so now that we have a hold to the pipe we're gonna put our pump dog on here our wires out just like that she's locked in I'm gonna give it a tap for good measure now it won't go nowhere now let's take a look at this fitting so this fitting was actually threaded into the brass pitless that was over there if we look at this these are actually the threads now this is metal this is galvanized this is exactly why you don't use galvanized because galvanized and brass do not mix so what's happened is the uh, the inside of this fitting has eroded away and the only thing left was the threads so we come over here and we look at the pitless and the way that this works is water comes in from here from the pump and then this is the slip fitting with an o-ring and that o-ring right there is chewed up you see that so when somebody installed it in the past they chewed that o-ring up so more than likely this has been leaking right around that point i have new o-ring so i'm going to go ahead and put one on it so the quick fix here is i'm just going to cut this off and we'll thread the pitless fitting back in it now, this pump has been sitting here running non-stop for weeks or months, ever since the homeowner has left. There's no telling how long it's been leaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this, and then I'm gonna do an electrical test to see what the amp draw on the pump is to make sure the pump is not actually burned up. So I wanted to kind of reiterate something. What we're using, or what we have here, is black roll pipe. Now, your system could be on black roll, or it could be on PVC. 
there's two really important things here. If it's on black roll pipe, you can pull this out by hand if you have two people and you just pull it out hand over hand over hand as long as it's not too heavy to deal with. About every 50 or 75 feet, you might have to trade off and let the other person pull for a little while. Now, what's important thing here is if it is on PVC, that pipe is not flexible enough to pull out by hand. Typically, it's installed with a crane. And I had one viewer in the past say they tried to pull it out, the pipe broke, and it all fell down the hole. So that is what I'm trying to get. Anybody whose pump might be hanging on PVC, don't think you can pull that by hand because the pipe will break at every connection. Theoretically, you would have to have a device like this, like this pump dog, in order to pull it out safely. Now, when I run across a system that has PVC, I pull it out 10 foot sections at a time and I cut it off. I pull 10 more feet, I cut it off, 10 more feet, cut it off. That way you have all this pipe stick, sticking up in the air and at the 20 foot connection it's not going to snap in the lower piece fall. In the past when I pulled a pump out with my brother we had pulled one out it had snapped. The edge of the PVC was so sharp it actually sliced up his forearm and he was like bleeding. So we never do that anymore. We go ahead and we just change them all over to a uh, 200 PSI black roll pipe. Face of the clamp away from the face of the pitless. That helps when you go to try to lower it in that these don't interfere with that. Get that nice and tight. Nice and tight. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back, I'm going to turn the breaker on, and we're going to let this system run just like this. It'll be shooting water out that direction. Then I'm going to go ahead and take my amp meter, and I'm going to test the wiring to make sure the pump pulls correct amps. Alright, we're going to turn it on. Let's see what it looks like. They're actually bringing water here right now. The hurricane's about to hit here. So everybody's freaking out, but well, luckily they got me on the job today. Water looks nice and clean. And we come over here and we take a look at the amp meter. It's pulling 7.1 amps. It's slightly high for a half horsepower but right in line if it was a three-quarter. Now, I don't know what size pump they have in this well, but I'm going to say it's probably a three-quarter. So, what we're going to do, we're going to let this system run for about 10 minutes like this. That'll be a good run time for the pump, and as long as the amp draw on the meter stays right where it's at and the system doesn't cut off, then I'll know the pump is good. All right, so I allowed the system to run for about 10 minutes. Amp draw on the pump stayed right at 7, so everything was electrically fine. So we're going to go ahead now. We're going to thread in our pitless bar. We're going to lower it back in. Uh, another quick thing is on the front of these things, you have O-rings. And this O-ring here has a tear in it. Let's see if we can get it to focus. See that tear? So we're going to go ahead and put a new O-ring in that piece right there. What I like to do, I like to take some silicone grease. We're going to put it on that o-ring. We're also going to smear it on the back side and the edge of this pitless to where in the future it won't be such a pain when it comes off. Bar. Put our bar back in. Got that nice and tight. See the 
rope. Okay. Wiggle it, push it all the way down. Locked in. Now we can unspin it. Pull our bar out. Take our wires. Stuff them back down. And our cap. We can push our cap back on. Now it's important when you turn your system back on that you look down there and make sure that that slip fitting isn't leaking. We'll take a peek down the well, make sure nothing's leaking. You can hear it humming, but nothing's leaking, nothing's spraying. So everything's good. Oh, the pump just kicked off. That's a good sign. Oh, man. So a quick explanation on a pitless adapter. So this would be your male and this would be your female. Now I'm gonna give you a close-up shot of this so you understand how it works. Yep. So this portion, if I can get this off, your well casing, the big pipe that sticks out of the ground, you would dig down about two or three feet and you would drill a hole through it. This would slip in and this rubber seal on this side would seal any exterior water from pouring into your well and then this rubber piece would go on the inside. You would reach down in, you would slip this piece on, and you can tell how it's contoured. It's contoured to fit the outside of the pipe. This goes on, and then this goes on, and then this portion here is on the outside, and you would thread a fitting into this to get your hose, your, your pipe to go to your house, and then this side is all you see from down in the well. And you see how it's labeled top, so this is the upward direction that it's going to face. Now, that's how that slip fitting looks. This is the piece that's going to be on the top of your drop pipe for your pump. So this piece is stationary, mounted in the well. And then this is going to get lowered with the pitless bar here. Your fitting that goes to your pump and your pipe go here. And this fitting goes down and slips and rests just like that. And that's how it holds it. No pipe is exposed above ground to prevent it from freezing in colder climates. Whenever you want to pull it, you would just thread your metal bar into this and wiggle it and slide it on up and then you can pull your pump out. Now, there's an O-ring that goes here, so it's very important to make sure that your O-ring is good. If not, go ahead and replace it and put some silicone grease around it before you reinstall it. But that's how a pitless works. Well, thank you all for watching this video. Hope it taught you something. If it didn't, check out my other videos on my channel. Find my well pump Q&A playlist. And there you'll find about 50 videos, all well related. You'll learn a whole lot about your systems. Very good at explaining it. A lot of people can understand uh, my method of teaching. So if you enjoy my videos, please give it a thumbs up. And go ahead, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you all next time.